thank you. This, oh, this is so beautiful. That's a long intro. This is, this is, a lot of people send me this story and, and I thank you each of you individually, um, or collectively rather. The Department of Education sent a letter to Princeton University's president informing him it's opening an investigation into whether Princeton has been racist. The investigation appears to be the direct result of the university president recently admitting his institution has long been a participant in systemic racism. On September 2nd, uh, he penned an open letter to the university community. Oh, uh, if for those of you who read uh, The Fountainhead, the antagonist of that book, Ellsworth Toohey, he was a, a combination of several real-life people, including, um, you can look, um, Clifton Fadiman is one of them, whose daughter Ann Fadiman now teaches at Yale. Um, Haywood Brown is another one. And there was a person who was the head of the Labor Party in Britain who was actually a communist. I forget it. I'm totally blanking on his name. Howard Lasky. And Rand had been written about Lasky in, in, her, in her manuscript, and then she went to hear a talk from him at the new school, and she was like, holy crap, this is my character made flesh. And she was taking notes, and she goes, by seeing him in real life, like everything he said, I would knew, know in the book how he would act, his mannerisms, his little snide sarcasm. And he, can you pull up Howard Las Harold Lasky? He looks a lot like that, like a lot. And it's these really like eighth rate, and the way Rand sums up the characters of the Proutonhead, uh, Elsa Tui was a man who could never be great and knew it. And whose goal in that book is to tear down greatness. Yeah. Can you put them side by side? It's just shocking. Like it's not the same, I, they're not the same visual like, as in twins, but the vibe, look at these two men. They're clearly spiritual soulmates. Oh my God, it's just chilling. It's the same villains a hundred years later. Absolutely. Oh, that, that, that look on their face. Mm. Nice. Don't you think it's a little undignified? Oh my God. So he wrote a letter to the university community outlining the steps the school plans to take to address systemic racism in Princeton and beyond. He specifically mentioned the killings of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and others. He said, this outrageous and awful violence has revealed yet and again, yet again, and with searing intensity, the long, painful, and ongoing existence of anti-black racism in America. Well, you would know uh, Woodrow Wilson was Princeton's president. He then mentioned some of what Princeton has been doing to, to combat it, including de dedicating new funding for teaching research and service projects related to racial justice and developing outreach programs. He also vowed to increase diversity among faculty, staff, trustees, and contractors and increase university accountability. The letter, however, also contains some self-criticism. He bluntly acknowledged that the school historically has intentionally not been committed to diversity. Oh, oh that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. We all know progressivism is proto-fascist anyway. I do say so. At a university that for most of its uh, history uh, intentionally and systemically excluded people of color, women, Jews, and other minorities, Princetonians now take pride in the diversity of our community, he said. And he even went on to give examples of how systemic racism found its way into the halls of Princeton. Princeton, excuse me. Racist assumptions of the past also remain embedded in the structure of the university itself. For example, Princeton inherits from early generations at least nine departments organized around European languages and culture, but only a s single relatively small program in African studies. Why would a university in New Jersey uh, from in America have so much focus on Europe, but not enough on Africa? That doesn't make any sense. The Department of Education has responded by using his letter as a springboard into an investigation to the school's practices because Princeton for years has held itself out to students and parents as an institution committed to equal opportunity and non-discrimination. The letter raised concerns that the university may have made illegally false and misleading claims. Therefore, the Department of Education wants to know precisely what evidence Princeton relied upon in deeming itself ripe for his racial mea culpa. The Department of Education requested they supply a spreadsheet detailing everyone who was harmed as a result of their racial discrimination. They will be required to sit for interviews under oath, and Princeton is required to provide written responses to related questions. Folks, I had said many times, and I'm sure many of you agree, that the universities are the last and easiest leg of the progressive stool that will be taken down because they will never see it coming and they've never had to fight for themselves. They've always had the government and especially the corporate press run interference for them. Look at that man. Look, that if I had to go in any field, any other than like academic discussion against him or Pelosi, I'm taking him. 
she's a badass. This? This is wilted lettuce.